Guess who? Yes, I got hat and everything, but you can't really see, can you? Back this sucker up. I'm in a room. I'm in a, I'm in a, like a, not an auditorium, but uh, it's a big room. Really here. And I got, I'm standing next to the organ so I can hit the floor with the, the foot pedals with my feet. I don't know if you're going to hear it. I brought up my 15 watt, uh, Line six, and we've got it on about five. It's on five. I was going to crank it, but this is five. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha!
I have been cleaning crap out because I don't think I won't get into it, but I'm just getting all the stuff ready. This is, this is something my mom always said because she was a pack rat, big time, and so am I. Obviously, if I had that many guitars, do I really need it? Those are all still in storage. So all I've got really to play with is my uh, Goth uh, last fall, and what did I play last time? Oh, the EVH, the, the friggin' Wolfgang. That's it. This and that. The Michael Special Golf Edition. So, I got this. I got that amp. That's it. I got, no, and I've got my, uh, my Ibanez White Zombie. Because that's what I'm going to finish recording with. But all the other equipment I need is up is up there already so I just need to bring that guitar because everything I've recorded so far if all five people that have uh, listened to the demos those are all done on my friend's Les Paul standard he had a freaking beautiful Les Paul standard he dumped JB's in there see more Duncan JB's that thing sounds amazing so I started laying down all the the rhythm tracks, and then I started doing lead. But I'm a you know Wang Bar dude, so I would get stuck. And uh, a lot of the times we had to re record really low, really low level, so no feedback. So when I'm doing these, you know. thing is fake feedback it doesn't work I mean it it does it doesn't sound right so I'm surprised no one has said anything about what I, but no one's listening to what I'm freaking laying down anyway so but I'm not really pushing it because I want I don't I'm not it's a demo I don't want people screaming at me at, about how bad it is <laughs>
turn it down.
I would tell you stories, but, well, I guess, was it yesterday? Or the Monday, I went and talked to Peter Orntego, Orntego, Orient. oh man, he hates it when I get his last name, Moose. He was, uh, Kisses Roadie. I used to work with him, and uh, I thought he, he did. He actually quit. He retired, but he decided that you know, he got bored and needed some extra cash, plus he's going through a, the big D. At his age, I don't know why, but you know he's already moving on. He's got a chick, and it's like, wow, this guy. <laughs> but he was like the guy in KISS. He did everything. He did the sound. He, he's the guy that taped every single show from the very first KISS show till uh, the beginning of Destroyer. Because the, as soon as Alive hit and they got huge. And you know what? I, I never saw KISS you know, until 77. Uh, so I never saw it. I don't remember Peter ever having the Sticks that shot out, you know, spark, sh shot out fire or flames or whatever. But he designed it. He designed everything. He designed the flash pots, the smoke bombs, the, uh, the explosion where you hear, which is, you know, in the back. All of that was rigged up by this guy, and he did everything. So he's rigging up Peter's, you know, things so you know they're not real he goes and he gets these two copper pipes <laughs> that are supposed to be drumsticks and then he holds them up you know during black diamond and that's probably why you never see it because it's at the top i guess i don't know but i don't i don't ever remember seeing it but they did it there's just not many pictures of it but there's a picture of him he blew his friggin he blew his thumb off and it was a miracle they were able to get it back on. But they gave him time off, not paid, even though you know they were gonna pay him and they you know, owed him a ton of money because he drove from one end of the country to the other end. Because Bill, you know, the manager or somebody, the tour, tour manager would book shows like all over the country, wherever he could get them, whenever he could get them. So they might be playing in Chicago and then playing in, you know, California and then back to like Alabama and then, you know, Arizona, Nevada, back up to the friggin' Midwest, all over. He says it was crazy. They were driven everywhere. And uh, Kiss was in first, they were all in a station wagon. That's how they got around. And that's how they stayed close at first, because they had to. They were in a station wagon. So it was the driver and all of Kiss in the station wagon, sleeping, you know, Peter doing his heroin. Because Peter was like, he was a heroin addict before he got into Kiss. And it just got worse and worse and worse as it, you know, it went on. The bigger they got, the bigger, the more he did. But, uh, yeah, he told me that, that, you know, he had to make sure Peter wasn't dead. He had to keep calling him during the night, you know, during like uh, 75, 74, 75, because they were getting big. They were playing stadiums, or not stadiums, but arena, not arenas really. They were playing big places like Cobo Hall. They still had out like three nights in a row. And then they'd come out here and they'd do like a show at the Santa Monica Civic. And then they'd go back and they'd do a couple shows and they'd get bigger and they'd come back here and they'd play uh, Long Beach Arena. But they're not selling any records because everybody's just there to see them, the show. And Peter was responsible for everything. He's got the, the designs of how he got the, because he, they say they hired a magician to do all this crap. It was Peter. He thought it all up. He designed the friggin' the drum riser, all the explosions, uh, the, the, like the stage. If the stage, they got a uh, roll of tape, they put, you know, tape on it. They had a guy that go and then he just put 
had duct tape on his hand, he'd go all over the stage getting it sticky so they wouldn't slide around on the stage on their friggin' boots. I never knew that. I never even thought about it until, you know, because I have slipped and when I used to wear heels, and I'm like, this is stupid. And I got lower heels, but still slipped. I can't imagine wearing friggin' platforms. That must have just been ridiculous. Still ridiculous, but. So, uh, yeah, I talked to him for hours on Monday because uh, we haven't seen each other for a while. I mean, a long while. I don't think he saw me since, uh, yeah, because my ex-wife sold some property for him, so that was 2008. And that paid for his daughter's uh, wedding and everything. So, yeah, we talked for hours, and uh, just, <laughs> he's a crazy guy. I'm going to try to set up a little interview with him on this. That would be good. I think you guys would like that, because that guy just has stories up the buck. You just cannot, you know, better not say that, I don't know, but he can tell you stories forever because he was on the road with Kiss for the first, you know, five or six years until, yeah, well, from the very first show until Destroyer, and Destroyer was, you know, huge. But he, what did he tell me? Yeah, that they, they used to use four guys to set up the stage for the live show, and they got it done because it's, you know, a bunch of fake amps, light and uh you know do all the you know the effects you could set up real quick that four people could set up their entire alive stage set then they came out with the destroyer stage and they still wanted to only have four guys set it up and they're like but you got a mountain over here for Gene to do his blood. They got another, th um, uh, like a planet for Ace to do his. It was crazy. Big lightning bolt, you know, flashing. And they were going to have an actual car come down and crash after uh, the Detroit Rock City, but they couldn't figure out how to deal with it without spending ridiculous amounts of money. But yeah, that show at first was. They just couldn't pull it off. They had to hire. So they begged Peter to come back. And then Gene, I think, I think what he said, Gene said, hey, give me a glass of water. Or hey, you, give me a glass of water. And he goes, you talking to me, Gene? And he's like, yeah, give me a glass of water. He goes, hey, just because you think you're big crap, you know, because Alive went gold or double, triple platinum, and now Destroyer was out. He has known Peter, not Chris, the other guy, since the beginning. And he was there since the beginning. And they, you know, he drove them all around the country and they, he always treated them, you know, fair and blah, blah, blah. Now he's big crap and he's just like, hey, you, get me a glass of water. And he came back after blowing his thumb off. And you know how much money Kiss gave him for that? A zero. They didn't pay him when he was out of work. They didn't pay nothing. So he said F you to, to Gene and he went straight to court and sued the crap out of him and got money. Not a lot, but he got money. Believe me, that's crazy, but that was back then when they didn't have as, as many lawyers as they do now. And then he quit and went and did uh, work with Angel. And then he worked with Alice Cooper. He was going to do the Go to Hell or Goes to Hell tour, but that was canceled. So he did Lace and Whiskey, which was like a combination of Goes to Hell and Lace and Whiskey. He did that tour. And then after that, Alice was. And I didn't. Oh, no. Because he also did From the Inside. That was 79. Because he said. You know, Alice was always, you know, running, where's the Coke, where's the Coke? And they would have it take to the back of the mirror in the hotel. And he'd run in there, shut the door, do his Coke. And I always thought, you know, he's saying he's sober, and he is sober from drinking, but he was doing blow like crazy, Alice Cooper. If you just look at it, uh, that, uh, the strange case of Alice Cooper is called. He is a twig. And then every album after that got worse and worse. Did Flush the Fashion, which is like 
new wave, and it was coke. It was just coke fueled. And then special forces, zipper catches skin, and then Dada, which was just well, this guy's on his he's crazy, he's lost his mind. And it's all because of, and by then he was drinking and doing blow. And his wife found out and said, You're going in, and if you do it again, I'm leaving. And that was it. He went in rehab and 